Hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation. My name is Salwa Safi. I'm a PhD student at Brno University of Technology and Tampere University, and an early stage researcher at the EU H2020 eWork project. Today, I will present our research paper titled Enhancing Uplink Performance of NR Red Cap in Industrial 5G and Beyond 5G Systems, which was accepted for a presentation at the IEEE ICC 2022 workshop number 12 on industrial private 5G and beyond wireless networks. This paper was co-authored by me, Salva Safi, Olga Fekhrova, and Sergei Ondrev from Tampere University and Yiji Hashek from Bern University of Technology. The presentation is structured as follows. I will start with setting up the context of our work, the motivation behind it, and the questions that we aim to answer. A summary of a technology review of cellular solutions introduced to enhance the uplink performance in 5G will be given in the second part. The applicability of these solutions for reduced capability new radio or NR red cap will be discussed subsequently. The fourth part will be dedicated to a performance evaluation of the gains and trade-offs of the selected solution using link level simulations. And the presentation will be concluded with a summary of our works contributions and future extensions. The majority of the spectrum allocations of 5G, and especially for industrial deployments, are placed in the midbands, which use the time division duplexing TDD technique. This TDD and midband based configuration presents limitations, especially in uplink capacity and coverage. To address these issues, the third generation partnership project through GPP introduced uplink enhancements in release 15 and release 16. The main enhancements were based on leveraging the use of multiple frequency bands and include dual connectivity, carrier aggregation, and supplementary uplink. A lot of works proved the benefits of using these three technologies, which are particularly important for industrial use cases where data from real-time applications need to be uploaded from end devices to control servers. However, there are always advancements in device capabilities that result in the introduction of new industrial use cases like reduced capability industrial wearables. Reduced capability or red cap devices use the NR red cap technology defined by 3GPP in its release 17. This technology was introduced mainly to specify the um, device capabilities required to support novel mid-end IoT use cases. As you can see in the spider diagram here, industrial applications involving red cap wearables that we named here industrial mid-end wearable applications have requirements that fall in between the three 5G service classes, which are enhanced mobile uh, uh, broadband, uh, ultra reliable low latency communications and massive machine type communications. To meet these new application requirements, there is a very important observation regarding the NR red cap specification that should be taken into account. It's about the network performance degradation that release 17 red cap wearables experience as compared to release 15 and our devices due to the simplifications in radio frequency and baseband capabilities. Therefore, the stringent application requirements from one side and the expected performance degradation from the other side prompt red cap wearables to employ solutions for uplink performance enhancement. And this was actually the motivation behind our work where we proposed to improve the uplink performance of industry and our red cap with appropriate cellular technologies. Our contributions will be around answering the following questions. First, what is or what are the solution or solutions among dual connectivity, carrier aggregation, and supplementary uplink that industrial red cap wearables can use with respect to the 3GPP recommendations for complex complexity reduction? Second, and after selecting one or more solutions out of uh, question one, what are the performance gains of employing the selected solution or solutions? And lastly, is there a performance degradation that red cap devices can experience concurrently with the above benefits? 
This last question is really important because we believe that there are always benefits and costs in terms of performance when employing a certain solution. The first step toward answering the previously stated questions is to review the three candidate solutions for uplink enhancement, namely dual connectivity carrier aggregation and supplementary uplink, and to understand the principle of each solution. Let's start with dual connectivity, where a DC-capable user equipment utilizes resources provided by a master node and a secondary node. And based on the technology used by the master node and the secondary node, we can have different configurations of the multi-radio dual connectivity. Like when one node is offering LTE access and the other one is providing NR access, we talk about ENDC. And when both access nodes are G node Bs, then it's the uh, NRDC configuration. The benefits of dual connectivity are offering wider coverage and higher throughput than in the single connectivity case. Carrier aggregation enables simultaneous aggregation of multiple component carriers. And similar to dual connectivity, we have several configurations of carrier aggregation based on the location of the aggregated component carriers. Interband Carrier aggregation is when the component carriers are in different frequency bands. Intraband contiguous is when car component carriers are adjacent in the same band. And intraband non contiguous is when component carriers are non adjacent in the same band. Carrier aggregation allows for a better coverage and data rate than in the TDDNR single carrier option. The principle of the third uplink performance enhancement is to allow user equipment to have an additional uplink named supplementary uplink that is to be employed when moving outside of the NR uplink coverage. So, so the motivation behind this supplementary uplink solution is to extend the coverage or the uplink coverage in 5G midband deployments. At a certain point, the UE, the user equipment, switches from the TDD uplink to the supplementary uplink, and the decision about the switching can be made at the device or the network side. So these are the three candidate solutions for uh, uh, uplink uh, enhancement that we are considering for red cap wearables. Now let's discuss which one among these solutions can be actually used by red cap wearables without compromising the NR red cap specification by 3GPP. Now that we have reviewed the principles of dual connectivity and carrier aggregation, we can say that these two solutions are not suitable for red cap user equipment since they can compromise the NR red cap design target. More precisely, a red cap, a reduced capability device, is expected to operate over a single band at a time, while DC, dual connectivity, and carrier aggregation imply transmitting and receiving data over multiple carriers simultaneously in both uplink and downlink directions, which leads to increasing the maximum bandwidth to be supported by the user equipment and requiring more radio frequency chain at the device or the UE uh, user equipment uh, side. While according to the NR red cap specification, there is a reduced user equipment bandwidth and a limited number of transmitting and receiving chains. This leaves us with the supplementary uplink solution to enhance the uplink performance of NR red cap. And indeed, supplementary uplink can be employed by red cap wearables since the user equipment will be configured with two carriers in the uplink, but it cannot transmit on both frequency at the same time. So the red cap wearable device can, accept, can exploit the benefits of supplementary uplink with no risk of increasing the bandwidth or the device complexity. And this brings us to the answer to our first question. So among the three candidate solutions, we advocate the use of supplementary uplink by release 17 reduced capability devices to achieve better uplink performance. Now we will move to the performance evaluation part where we will answer the two remaining questions regarding the performance gains and costs of using the selected solution.
supplementary uplink by red cap wearables. So the aim of this evaluation is to confirm the performance gains of supplementary uplink for red cap devices and examine the potential performance losses due to switching from TDD uplink to FDD supplementary uplink. To obtain the needed evaluation results, we perform link level simulations using MATLAB 5G toolbox, which provides 3GPP standard compliant functions for NR communication modeling. In terms of key performance indicators, we evaluated several metrics of the three uh, 5G uplink physical channels, namely physical uplink uh, shared channel, physical uplink control channel, and physical random access channel. The, uh, or in more details, the key performance indicators are physical uplink shared channel maximum coupling loss, physical uplink control channel block error rate, physical random access channel detection probability, physical uplink shared channel throughput, and physical uplink shared channel block error rate. The table here summarizes the evaluation parameters, including the frequency bands, bandwidth, number of transmitting and receiving antennas, and other uh, important parameters, uh, both in uplink and supplementary uplink. The first results are for the physical uplink shared channel maximum coupling loss, uh, MCL, which is a coverage metric that we use to evaluate the uplink coverage. As you can see in the table below, supplementary uplink provides better coverage than uplink and can achieve coverage gain up to 8.33. This gain can be justified by the fact that a lower frequency band, 700 megahertz, is used in supplementary uplink, which gives a better coverage than the mid-band uplink. Next, we evaluated the physical uplink control channel block error rate for the considered range of signal to noise ratio values. First observation from the plot is that supplementary uplink provides a lower block error rate than the TDD midband uplink. The second observation is related to the target performance of the physical uplink control channel block error rate according to 3GPP, which is equal to 1% at specific required SNR values. So the two points highlighted in this plot represent the obtained block error rate at the SNR levels required for achieving the uh, target performance of 1% of the physical uplink control channel block error rate. And overall, we can conclude that supplementary uplink for physical uplink control channel communications helps achieve not only lower block array than that in the TDD uplink, but also the target performance of physical uplink control channel block array as specified by 3GPP. For the physical random access channel, we assessed the probability of detection of preambles. This metric is significant, especially in relation to the random access procedure, because it indicates whether the gene would be correctly received the preambles and determine the timing estimation for the synchronization with the user equipment. Similar to the output of the physical uplink control channel blocker rate, we can deduce from this plot that by employing the supplementary uplink, red cap wearables can achieve better physical random access channel preamble detection. And at the same time, the 99% target performance, which was not reached in the case of TDD midband uplink. Via the three previous results, we confirmed the performance gains of using supplementary uplink by red cap wearables and thus answered the second question. And since it's important to also understand whether preferring supplementary uplink over uplink incurs any performance losses, we here evaluated the physical uplink share channel throughput and block error rate. And we found that supplementary uplink has inferior performance than the uplink in terms of these two metrics, mainly because of the use of reduced transport block size in lower frequencies. So by these results, we answered the third and last question and confirmed that switching from the 3.5 gigahertz uplink to the 700 megahertz supplementary uplink enhances the uplink performance of NR red cap in terms of several metrics, but also causes the degradation of some other 
key performance indicators. And this learning from the performance evaluation part leads us to another thinking about new solutions to make use of the performance gains of supplementary applique for NRAD cap without comprom compromising the ability to meet the industrial application requirements. For example, one method can be related to limiting the scope of the use cases of supplementary applying by red cap wearables in industrial environments in a way that the end user experience is not adversely affected by switching from the main NR uplink to the NR supplementary uplink in industrial 5G and beyond 5G systems. This brings us to the conclusion of this presentation. And as a summary of our contributions, we discuss the uh, multiband operation of RedCap devices. We propose supplementary uplink as the technology that can enhance the NR RedCap uplink performance without compromising the 3GPP release 17 design, design target of wearable devices. And we supported this proposal with our link level simulation based assessment of the performance gains and costs of switching from TDD uplink to FTD supplementary uplink including other metrics of interest in the performance evaluation part and using system level simulations are part of the future extensions of this work, along with continuing in the exploration and identification of interesting use cases of supplementary uplink by red cap wearables in industrial environments. At the end, we, as authors of this paper, acknowledge funding from the EU H2020 eWare project and also the Academy of Finland. Thank you very much for the attention and feel free to send us your questions.